Welcome back all, Daz from Motoro Techniques. So uh, we're going to continue on with the electronic side of things because uh, that's something that's really interesting to me. So we're going to look at you, the use of NeoPixels and we'll explain what they are very, very shortly. But I believe it's one of the things that have revolutionized uh, model railroading because we can basically eff effectively have infinite amount of colors, uh, more than we're ever going to use in uh, in the model railway or model railway industry anyway. Big shout out to my patrons out there. Every little bit counts. I will put a link below if you wish to um, help me along with my journey. Make sure you comment um, how you might use NeoPixels. Have you used NeoPixels before or never heard of them? I'd love to hear everyone's... Um, everyone's take or what they think they might use them for if they don't think they'd use them at all. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. So let's get into this and stop the waffle. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCBWay or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with one to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCBWay don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Watch out for my upcoming videos where I'll be using some of their products. So what are these little NeoPixel LEDs that I speak of. So basically what they are, they're individually addressable LEDs housed all in one string, and they can be controlled by one single pin of a microcontroller, i.e. a Uno or a Nano, which was what we're gonna to show today. This means the one pin controls all the LED colors and which LEDs are on at any particular time, depending on how you set up the, the sketch in um, the Arduino. Which compared to the norm, what 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 we used to have, uh, the normal RGB LEDs that they had uh, three pins to control the colors, and that's how we controlled um, the the color from that point of view. So that means with the one pin, the one data pin, we'll call it, um, you can individually address them and create some amazing effects and up to several million colors. So on screen there, I just did a quick Google search and put in NeoPixel. That's all I did. Um, as you can see, there's a vast array of different varieties what what you can use, and obviously some you wouldn't be able to use in the model railroad um, application, I should say. But there's a lot that you can be. So the ones we're going to look at just for testing today are these little guys here. So in the strips, which have got eight individual LEDs. So the reason I chose those is just for a bit more ease of uh, to show you what the concept's all about. But what I can see to be used would be either individually, what you, how you can buy them. So I do have some of these. And this is in, in eBay. These come individually so you can actually snap these off. So you have individual, so you can have different length wires between them so I can see them being important or using in a, in a group of buildings or a building and just setting it up that way. So up on screen here is the back side of a individual, sorry, the front side, I should say, of their individual Neo Pixel LED. So how they work is you, you can't see at the top there, but that's the, we'll work around what all these pins do. So you've got the data in, which that's the pin that we'll talk about that comes in from the microcontroller. And then on the corresponding is the data out. So what will happen with that? So the data out will go to the data in of the corresponding NeoPixel LED. Then each uh, NeoPixel LED will take a ground and also a five volt power supply. And this example is quite a good one of it. Um, up close what the, the the pixel looks like or the LED 
So you've got the blue, red, and the green, and obviously that's how it mixes all the colours together to form infinite amounts of colours just about that uh, more than we're ever going to use in a model railway. So how do we choose what colours we're going to use So and what definition numbers that, that we need to use? So I've just... You can just go in there, your Google search, and just type in uh, RGB color-coded charts, and this is what I've done here. So there's various ways you can look at it, depending on what sort of obviously what colors you want. You can sort of see this this one here, uh, the RGB color picker, which I'm going to put at the top of the screen here. This particular one, you can just simply move it around. So if you want a more of a golden sort of a yellowy color, then you can sort of see the RGB definition numbers. And they'll become more relevant for when we go into the, the code in Arduino to pick what color we want to use. You just sort of have to be a little bit careful. Obviously, that's going to be a very bright yellow. So if you cast your view down, I'll bring this now, the color scheme chart. If you want something that's a little less bright, you can, well, it's more of a greeny color, so sort of a, a color more like that. You can sort of see what numbers you need to use. And obviously, if you want to go to one end of the extreme, a black, which is um, a black at the top here, that's going to be all zeros. So that's going to be something that's off. And the use of the colors, you'll see it when we get to the code shortly. So we've got the value for the red, the green, and the blue. It's just a matter of putting those numbers in, and you'll get that corresponding color, and depending on what you want. The next thing we'll have a look at is just quickly the code. So this is not my code. This is from Rudy um, in in Europe. So I will link to the that the original code below and acknowledge his great work here. So there's not a lot you need to change on this. However, um, you can go a lot further depending on what type of effect you want to do. I won't go through the code intimately how it all works, but just things that you need to change to get the effect you want. So the first little example will show you, which is almost, I think it's a great little effect that Rudy came up with. It's like the dancing sort of strobe uh, police lights. So the first definition you'll need to do is the interval time between the, the sequence steps, which are, these are the sequence steps here. So that's 40 milliseconds, so that's quite a, a, quite a quick fire off. Um, this one we're going to have 16 LEDs firing off, and there's going to be 48 steps. So if you were to count all those steps there as I'm highlighting, that is equates to 48. And now when I spoke of before regarding the, the, the pin in, the pin out, or the data pin in and the data pin out, so the data pin first in the string comes off pin number six on the Arduino. And this one has a trigger pin, so like a switch or something similar, and that comes off uh, pin number eight. And the blink time, so that's another constant you'd, you'd probably want to change in regards to, so this only stays on for six seconds. So in an example, when you're trying to use something like this, like a day and night scene, I would think you would have to significantly put that out to, to something a little bit longer. However, for the sake of the video, to keep it nice, short, sharp and shiny to show what the sequences look like when they scroll through, uh, we'll keep that number nice and low. So these lines here is where we start creating some of the magic so we just spoke about um, the RGB color pickers. So this is where you put that information. So each line corresponds to an uh, individual LED. So that would be the first. So the top of the line, that's LED number one, two, and three. We obviously got 16 LEDs. So all you need to do is copy and paste under this scenario. Okay, so we've got our 16 strings there. So um, depending on how you want to do it, you can maybe group it in groups of four, five, six, doesn't matter. Um, all you would do is you go and change the code and the sequence through here, how you want it to flash and what colors you want um, to get the desired effect. So this bit is just a matter of having a bit of a play around. Uh, probably best just to play around with a few to start with and just keep copy and pasting and replicating it across. I won't go into too much on how you upload the sketch. There's plenty of great videos out there, but I'll just show you very, very quickly. It's just a matter of choosing the correct board, 
which for me is the Nano and choosing your correct COM port. Obviously, I don't have my board plugged in right now. But what you then do is, particularly if you're playing around with this, it's probably best just to use the tick and that verifies and um, verifies the sketch and then you upload it and it comes up with any errors that might be in it. The one error I did find that I did come up with, if I don't, if I correspond the number of LEDs and I've got too many lines here or not enough lines, it'll come up with an error to say to say that just that. All right, so what we'll quickly look at here is the the schematic of how this all works. Now, the NeoPixels that I'm using are slightly different, only that they're all joined together from the factory. These are obviously individual ones, but uh, the the methodology and how we go about it is um, is the same. So I'll start here with the the Nano, the, the Arduino Nano. So I'll be using the USB just purely because it's easier on the bench test, but out in the field or at the layout, I'll be using uh, this ground pin and a voltage in to bring your five volts in to the Nano. So from there, as we discussed, we're using digital pin six to the digital in of the first uh, NeoPixel. And then we're using pin digital pin eight to the pin which pulls it to ground, hence why we've got the ground. So that's a, a normally off switch. So when you push it down, it fires off, brings it brings it to, to ground, and then it'll fire off there, which is the, the trigger within the, the sketch. So from there, we've got the five volts out that will run the five volt or VDD um, of the of the Nano, sorry, the, the NeoPixel. With mine, um, we've already got inbuilt uh, resistors, but obviously for this one, these don't have them. So you have to, if that's the type you have, you have to do some sort of resistor, as so you will more than likely blow these up. I'll leave that up to you, what you want to do. Uh, the way I've got it set up, um, it is that you can sort of play around with the brightness, depending on what, um, depending on what uh, RGB you put, uh, RGB numbers you put into the sketch. So this is the little rig that I've made up. Uh, the top of the screen there is just the board that's holding the uh, the Nano. So I've pushed the, the button which connected to pin 8 and you can see the 16 LEDs firing off. Now that's obviously just a 6 second interval but that, obviously that can be changed in the sketch. So what we'll do, we'll have a little bit of a play with some of these variables. So I've jigged this ske sketch a little bit regarding what I'm trying to achieve is trying to replicate sort of some randomness in some buildings that you might have with different colored LEDs. So what I've changed here, I've changed the interval time out to five seconds. You could probably go further in the real world, but this sort of gives you some sort of idea what it might look like uh, with the, the color and how they fire off um, within the sketch after you tris, um, bring the trigger pin to low. So you can see I've now also added 16 LEDs. So it means you need 16 lines of code here. So what I found probably the easiest thing to do is is open up some sort of notepad and adjust them over here and then it gives you the nice line spacings then try and actually do it in the sketch over here then just cut and paste it across so what i did i sort of made a few little templates with different colors and the like and then i just replicated that through and changed some of the numbers just to add a little bit more randomness to it so you've noticed i've gone for reasonably low numbers here that's sort of to keep the the brightness down i suppose more than anything it's just something you're gonna to have to have a play with uh, the video that I'm going to bring up shortly definitely doesn't show the uh, the true colours of what they actually are showing. I sort of want something between a, a sort of very warm white to even almost a yellowy type light that might replicate gas light or something similar for my layer. And you can go right the way through to something that's more fluorescent which has a little bit of a blue tinge to it. So after you've dragged and dropped that, change the, the interval times up here. It's just a matter of uploading the sketch again to the same Arduino. And we'll bring up the video shortly and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, what we'll quickly do here is just show you what the new sketch is going to look like and some of the colors that I've been experimenting with. So we'll just press the button and I'll insert some funky music.
that's the, the end of the video at this point in time. So make sure you comment below. I suppose the takeaways from this are, please, is it something that you may use, NeoPixels, with the amount of colors you can use? Um, the sort of the random ne the sequence generator that has been created here is, is quite flexible. However, I, I would like to try to experiment with the last project I did that is a lot more random than this one. It's probably a little bit less work, maybe in the front end, I'm not sure. So uh, please comment below or give me considerations or ideas how I might join these two sketches together because it's something that's obviously a little bit exciting, um, the, the lighting animation in, uh, in your buildings. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.